Hey everyone, welcome to Zero Labs. Today is Thursday, February 18, 2016. I'm Mark Brash, your host, and welcome to This Week in Alternative Energy. As usual, Mark and Simon have been busy writing at revolutiongreen.com. Here are just some of the interesting articles that you will find there. Let's start with the Revolution Green video of the week by Dave Jones of EEB Blog on YouTube. This video is about a year old, but it's entertaining nonetheless. And it's a very good analysis at how well-meaning, albeit hapless inventors can delude themselves and others out of sheer ignorance of how things actually work. This channel has been on my subscribe list for years and I encourage you to check it out. And speaking of free energy bullshit, the QEG Sweden team who have been testing the Keshe Foundation MagGrav energy device again this week published their ongoing data collection Cooperating with others are also finding that it loses an average of 6% total power to internal resistive losses. Facebook now has a page called MagGrav Customers where people have begun to reveal the internal components of these MagGrav units. Cash and his cult community initially claimed they needed five days to condition. Then he claimed five weeks. Now he claims five months. And when five months have passed, Keshe will no doubt say five years. The colossal Keshe catastrophe continues in the YouTube playlist I've linked to in the description below. <laughs> uh, sorry, I just can't help but laugh. In a related story, my star formation Gans reactor has sold at auction on eBay to an art collector in Washington State and it is on its way into quack science history. You may or may not see it publicly displayed, but it certainly will be an interesting conversation piece. My thanks to the winning bidder. I hope it brings you much enjoyment and laughter for many years to come. Sorry, Sterling, you had your chance. You missed out. I, I, I gave you a chance. What do you, what do you want? All right, uh, moving on. Joy Scientific claims to have developed an ultra-efficient electrochemical process supplying its own energy needs from a small fraction of the hydrogen produced for hydrogen on, hydrogen on demand, anytime, anywhere. As wacky as that sounds, there is a very credible team behind this company, and their technology is well worth keeping an eye on. The Storn O-Cube is still in the news. In a surprising move, Sean McCarthy revealed the basic internal components on Facebook. Yes, those really are two EverReady alkaline batteries, two Orbo cell packs, a power controller chip, a lithium-ion rechargeable battery, and a USB daughter board, and discusses what they believe is the reason for many of the premature failures they had in the field. As strange as this may seem, considering some of the research he has done with materials and the fact that they did not just roll up the carpets and disappear, Mark Dancy still gives this one a definite maybe of working as advertised. Okay, Mark, if you say so. In yet another interesting paper published about graphene by researchers at Japan's Tohoku University, the properties of graphene continue to amaze. This particular paper studies the graphene, studies graphene intercalated with calcium, uh, with calcium atoms and the superconducting properties it exhibits. Intercalation, by the way, is uh, the process of taking a material and slipping it in between two other pieces of material. So think of a Think of a, a layer of paper 
as a layer of graphene and intercalation is the insertion of a material in between in between those layers so intercalated graphene is simply independent layers that have been separated by another material in between most often times the intercalation is used for exfoliating graphene into its individual individual layers in this case they're leaving it intercalated for the application kind of interesting uh, and it's sort of up my alley for experimentation what else here okay uh, the research group of professor Haido Ono and associate professor Shunsuki Fukami also of Tohoku University has studied the control of magnetization using a current applied to heterostructures comprising an anti-ferromagnet. They found that the current gives rise to a flow of electron spin in the anti-ferromagnet, which induces magnetization switching in a neighboring ferromagnet. Mark found this and thought it may be uh, of some interest to our magnetic motor experimenters out there. He may very well be right about that. The Hydrolyte Kickstarter campaign is now in full swing. I want to thank all who helped in the Thunderclap campaign to help get the word out. The device, powered by salt water and consumable magnesium anodes, is said to have as much total energy as approximately 85 AA alkaline batteries, last up to 250 hours of continuous use, and cost only a few dollars for each replacement rod. There are already 75 backers as of this newscast, with first deliveries expected to begin in July of this year. Very good stuff. And this just in, Mark has agreed to take part in a special live broadcast airing on the Zero Fossil Fuel Channel, February 20, at 10 a.m. Eastern Time, 4 p.m. Central European Time. This is not on the Zero Labs channel, it will be on the Zero Fossil Fuel Channel. 4 p.m. Central European time to talk about the product, his vision for future products based on the same power source, and take questions from our live chat rooms. I hope you'll mark your calendar and join us. Link to the live show is in the description below. Users of Red Hat Enterprise Linux, CentOS, and manufacturers using Embedded Linux System and glibc a collection of open source code that powers thousands of standalone applications and most distributions of Linux, including those distributed with routers and other types of hardware, were placed on high alert Tuesday to a security flaw uncovered by engineers at Google and Red Hat independently of one another, but who also later collaborated on a proof of concept exploit and a fix for the vulnerability. Any system incorporating glibc version 2.9 released in 2008 up to the current version 2.22 are potentially affected. Not known as of yet is whether or not hackers at large were aware and already exploiting it. Much to my own delight, while affected versions of glibc are still available for installation from the Ubuntu repositories, it is not installed by default as part of the operating system, at least not in the Zubuntu variant that I use. Also not affected is the DDWRT upgraded router firmware that I use. Your mileage may vary. Please make sure you check what version you have and whether or not you're using it. And lastly, the date and time are confirmed for yet another special live event. Also to be aired on the Zero Fossil Fuel channel, not Zero Labs Live, Saturday, February 27 at 3 p.m. Eastern Time, 9 p.m. Central European Time. This event should last about one hour and will include a uh, open Q&A session with my good friend Robert Murray Smith in the chat rooms afterward. I am very excited to have Robert as my guest. I hope you will mark your calendar and join us for that one also. And that's all for this week in Alternative Energy. I hope you enjoyed this roundup and join me again next week for more interesting renewable energy news from the alternative energy world. A great big thanks to all of you who have joined in to support me, my work, and this channel through Patreon, PayPal, direct donations via checks and with Bitcoin. If you have not yet joined in, I hope you will. Links are, of course, in the description below. If you've got some research you'd like to make public, 
or a widget that you've been working on in your garage showing promise that you want people to know about, drop me a line at zero news at altenergy.org. Links to all articles for everything you've seen on this broadcast are in the description below. And as always, please rate, share, comment, and subscribe to my videos. And peace, everyone.